Welcome to Oregon Voters Digest, the program that brings forward the social and political issues that are important to people living here in the Pacific Northwest. And now, your host, Bruce Broussard. Bruce Broussard, your host. I think we're going to have quite an hour this hour. And what we're going to do, uh, the second half, uh, the second half of the show, we're going to open up the lines and give you an opportunity to to participate. And um, so I think you're going to you're going to really enjoy the show today. As you know, we've got all sorts of election issues running around. We've got um, uh, the Occupy Wall Street. In fact, even locally, we've got Occupy Portland at this point in time. I say Occupy Oregon because it's it's, it's pretty well. The, 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 the leading proponent, if you will, in the whole issue of the occupation. We're going to talk about that, too. And uh, to join me in this, with, uh, we've got someone that's, that's very knowledgeable, uh, who's a former chair of the Clackamas County Republican, uh, also a uh, former Army, right? Am I right? Army. Army. Right. Former Vietnam. Army. Yeah. Tom Devaney. And as you know, we're sort of wrapping up Memorial Day. Uh, I hope you've... Uh, you all recognize a, a vet during that particular time, or, or military, whether it be whether it be spouse or, or whether it be um, son or daughter. Or, but anyway, I, I thought it was, a, it was a time to recognize those who, who have given, uh, given, their, given their tour, if you will, uh, during the military, uh, both past and present. So uh, Tom is here with me today, and, and, uh, and so we're just going to go on and, and uh, we'll talk a little bit of Tom, get, get, give you a feel about his background. In fact, we'll spend a little bit of time talking about the military a bit in terms of his participation in the in the military, and he may throw a question or two at me too at the same time, but no problem. Tom, welcome aboard. Thank you, sir. Okay, good. Hey, look, uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, who Tom is, for instance, right off the bat here. Are you Oregonian? I'm an Oregonian. I moved here in 1969, 1970, actually 1970, January. I graduated from North Texas State after coming back from overseas. I have another degree in uh, programming from Portland Community College. Mm, okay. I took a stint for 10 years uh, in 86 to 96, got sick of it, came back, been here ever since. This is my home, mm -hmm. my wife's and I. Okay. Uh, got involved in the Republican Party in 2001. Uh, and you were living in Clackamas at that point in time? I was in Salem. In I Salem. was in Salem, and I went to work for the Jackie Winters campaign for Jackie. CD5. Yeah. And that was I, that was my first political experience. Jackie, by the way, she's presently a senator from at Salem. Oregon, right? right? Right. State senator, Jackie Winters. And quite a lady, I mm -hmm. might add. Yes, yes. And... Uh, was uh, elected chairman of Clackamas County Republicans in 2006. 2006, okay. And served two terms, four years by acclamation, and uh, got out. I had uh, 2010. John Lee took over, very, very capable mm -hmm. man. Mm -hmm. I left him with uh, the best organization in the state and money in the bank. Well, that's, that's a good deal. That's good. John's a great, a great man. Uh, it was time for me to leave, and I had a, a book I was trying to promote, a novel, and uh, was elected delegate in Clackamas County mm -hmm. and serve as John's right-hand man. He's doing, it's been a year now, he's doing extremely well. Okay. We still have the best organization in the state. We supply most of the manpower okay. for ORP. Okay. We have the most experienced and knowledgeable people. Okay. In okay. Republican politics. All right. But, now that we've gotten that out the way, uh, let's just start off right off the bat. What do you think about the Republican Party today? Uh, the Republican Party is always okay. It's the party of Lincoln. Uh, I love the Republican Party. The, some of the people of, in the Republican Party uh, are you don't approve of. I don't approve of some of them. I don't know. They're very, very, very few. Uh, I got a an email from Alan Alley, who is the chairman of the ORP, mm -hmm. the other day, and he put in an email some very good words, and I'll just read a couple of them. He but said, "Before we get into that, I, I want to do that. We're going to stay. All right. But let's start off at the top of the deal. And, you okay. Know, you, like you said, and a lot of times uh, people in the party, in the Republican Party, always tend to to denote that as the party of Lincoln." 
It is. And when you start thinking about President, former President Lincoln, uh, in in the in the eighteen hundreds during those days during his presidency, he was noted as 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 very very pro, if you will, uh, minorities, if you will, you know, yeah, i.e. the uh, the thinking about the Emancipation Proclamation, uh, freeing the slaves, eighteen sixty three, yeah, voting rights and Correct. things of that nature along the line, uh, being the first, if you will, of uh, of allowing African Americans uh, during that particular time to join in the military. During the military right. time, or whatever Buffalo soldiers, yeah, Buffalo soldiers, the whole nine. Yeah. You know, I guess my point is that uh, there were all these so-called accolades when it came to, uh, i.e., uh, African Americans and, and the like during that particular time, and a, a very, uh, let's see, a very colorful history of all that. Line. But for some strange reason, today, unfortunately, they don't tend to relate to that, to those accolades. Why is that so? I think that we tend to think of African Americans as equal. Uh, I think we tend to push aside word, the racial word? the really? racial issue. Uh, I think white people want to bring them in as equals and want to, uh, I guess, forget the, the racial issue, hmm. at least in politics. Hmm. At least in politics. But I'm still thinking we should. Okay. We should. Herman Cain is a good example. Uh, of a man, I haven't heard one negative word about Herman Cain. I haven't, and the last I heard about Barack Obama was almost nothing, and it's been lost. No one ever refers to the racial issue. He's president of the United States. He was elected by white people. Without the support of white people, he would not be president. People wanted to change, and they didn't care if he was red, yellow, blue, or green. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He's a good man. He represents both the country and himself, but I disagree with his politics. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. So you're saying that they're, they're treating them on, a, on an equal basis on both right. sides. Right, and I insist upon that. Okay, okay, okay. I, I, I was thinking that, uh, you know, well, naturally, the president, President Obama, is a very prominent person on that on the inside, and pretty well identified as a Democrat. Right. But uh, he's running; he's president of the United States for all of us, for that matter. Right. And then now we've got uh, well, we've got the politics of another presidential election, and we've got uh, businessman Herman Cain, right, who happens to be an African American, okay, yep. business person aspect of it, and very prominent. Some were saying initially, no one knew who Herman Cain was. Until all of a sudden, now the guy is at the at the top of the you know almost at the top of the heap, if you number will. two by one point, and being treated basically on the yeah. same level. Yeah. Okay. But prior to that, uh, just getting right into that whole issue of the presidential election, and it's it's really something the way they're vetting all these folks and whatever. I think about some of the other candidates when they start thinking about the whole issue of race, when uh, Governor Perry, for instance, was when, he, when there was an issue about uh, Rick uh, Perry, Rick Perry okay. from, from Texas. Yep. And, uh, and 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 the, and the whole issue of uh, what was on the rock, you know, the, the the nigger head ranch. Remember that? No. Yep. There was a there was a yeah there was a there, there was painted on this rock outside of his ranch, his family ranch, was the words nigger head ranch. Yes, sir. Okay. That I mean that was there. Okay. All right. And then naturally he he talked about the fact that that was something uh, a piece of property that they had leased. Uh, some time ago, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Did, but, did he own the property? Yeah, he owned the property. Okay. Yeah, yeah, there, there was, there was, there was that was the property, and then they naturally they painted it over. But then, okay. But then, when when one started thinking about Texas politics and and how they treated uh, uh, folks in those days, uh, it, it was there. I, I can still recall in Texas because I grew up in Texas in Houston, Houston, Texas. I'm from Louisiana, but I grew up in, okay. in my school days, and it was it was a segregated society aspect. Absolutely. Of it. But even on the shelves, when I was a young young person, and, and and I'd go to the store and whatever, I noticed on the shelf itself there was a uh, there, there was a notion in, in in one of the products that were there called nigger head oysters. Yes, right on the shelf, nigger head oysters, and there were a number of, number of other items and whatever. But but that was just a very Angie Mama. You saw the Angie Mama. I don't know if you Angie Mama. Yeah, Angie Mama or the yeah. uh, Uncle yeah. Ben's rice and things of that nature. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so th there, were, there were a number of things along that line that um, that you don't forget. Uh, oh, no, I don't forget that at all. And so when that came up, you know, the first thing I, heard, I, I that came up when uh, 
when they talked about this niggerhead ranch thing on this rock right outside of his ranch was that I asked myself the question, well, we've got elected officials in Texas who I've known, about, that are from the Houston congressmen, in fact, uh, uh, there are several congressmen, uh, persons who are, who are African Americans, and uh, thinking, well, well, who went to the ranch? I mean, how many minorities actually went to his ranch yeah. as an invitee? And I, I started, so then I asked myself the question, well, why wasn't there a press conference, you know what I mean, along that line? So anyway, long and all, my point is that that happened, and, and so they, they talked about it initially uh, during the, the so-called debates, but they just sort of passed over it. It's over with now, but I don't think it's going to be over. I think as time goes, it may come up, but at least, it, at least it's being discussed. You know, and we've talked about this before, about the fact that President Obama was elected. He, he was an African-American, and we did need to talk about the issue of race, and we are talking about the issue of race. See, right? point blank, which is good. I think it's good for this country it that is. we are, so that hopefully we can get this behind us. And so now we got, we, we, I, so anyway, I just thought I'd throw that on the table. Let me tell you a story. Talk to me. I was raised in Texas. I was raised in Tennessee. I was raised in Oklahoma. Okay. In the Deep South during the 50s. Okay. So now I know very well what you're talking about. I entered the Army in 1964. <clears throat> And as a son of the South, was a racist at 23 years old. Mm -hmm. I went to basic training in Fort Polk. It took me six weeks to dispose of that. Mm -hmm. Because my brothers, black or white, were going to watch out for me, and I was going to watch out for them. And it was like a curtain that went mm -hmm. down. It never went back up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we can leave the race card on the table. Nobody is saying that you should ever forget that and that you should remind people of that. But we have to move on, Bruce. I, I can appreciate that. We have to do move you think, on. Do you think, however, though, that we're still fighting the Civil War? In the South? Uh, the, the people North in the South are still fighting, are Civil still War. fighting the Civil so War. So race is still on the table. South Carolina down there, South Carolina, Louisiana, Tennessee, Mississippi. Mm -hmm. One of the worst. Uh, I think it's getting better. Uh, they have elected black officials. Uh, I, I don't know if it'll ever go away, but uh, it'll drag the country down, mm -hmm. and I'm not going to have any part of it, and neither will any Republican you don't make any that I will, mm -hmm. that I know will have any mm -hmm. anything to do with it. But it has been if said. he wins, if Herman Cain wins, mm -hmm. I will bust my brains to get that man elected. You president. think they will allow Herman Cain, uh, two blacks, to be running against one another? Absolutely. In this country? Absolutely. It speaks really well for the United States. Okay. okay. It speaks well. If Herman Cain gets the, gets the nomination, he's our Republican candidate. Tom will be out there working for him every day. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, they, 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 again, we talked about Herman Cain. We, we can go through all, right down Newt Gingrich. We can go through all of them. We got Perry. Everybody's got a little something in their closet. They all have baggage. Fact. You got my point? But then Herman, in, in particular Herman, does the, this whole issue of sexual harassment thing, yeah. which I thought was very interesting in terms of how they, how, how'd, you, how'd you feel when they brought that piece out uh, and how they did it? I tell you how I'd, how I'd take it. I'd leave it. I'd leave it alone until it's verified, until somebody comes out and says uh, an investigative agency mm -hmm. or somebody worthy of note uh, says, yes, this is what happened, and it either did or it didn't. Mm -hmm. If it happened, it happened. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have to move on from that. We have to move on. If it happened, if it if it's uh, a problem from Herman, uh, he has a decision to make, and I hope I hope he moves on. I hope the country uh, moves on. Uh, I don't know if it's true or not. But it was alleged. I mean, it's alleged. It was alleged. But but the media, a majority of the media, was sort of like as if it was a fact. If you're hearing the same thing, they always assume that. Hmm. They always assume that. Always. So. Like, no, uh, but it doesn't, it seems to be dying down just a little. And I saw one of the accusers uh, the other day on TV. I have to tell you, I was suspicious. <laughs> the presentation was not that. I was really suspicious of how, how that was presented. <laughs> but it's like somebody told me who had been in politics for 30 years. She said, Tom, people make mistakes. <laughs> Fine. But Good again, point. still a ledge. It's still you know, alleged. You can't assume it's still anything, alleged. But talking in, in an affirmative situation, it doesn't help the situation out at all. It doesn't. 
Yeah. But Move I, on, talk politics, yeah, talk right. issues, talk right. finance, right. talk fiscal right. responsibility. How do you think he's handling himself today? I think he's doing well. Okay. I think he's doing well. Uh, he's not uh, over aggressive in dealing with it. He's uh, just above zero, which is where he should be. I think he's doing a good job in handling it. I think uh, his people are doing very well. I think, I, th I think it will play out. I think he will put this behind him. Well, you know, it's interesting uh, you make that point because initially, when I, I didn't know who he was at one point, I think a, a yeah. number of, of a number of of us in this country didn't know who he was. Yeah. And then all was it was as if to say, then when we saw him, it was as if to say, well, this is just a kind of a to balance the situation out as far as Republicans having a black involved as part of the deal. But then after a while, he started uh, maintaining himself. He started uh, right. making a point about various issues and this, that, and the other, and very positive looking and things of that nature. There was sort of sense of an acceptance, if you will, from the from the Republicans. Fair? Fair. He's a businessman who brought himself up from nothing. He saved a pizza company, which was going bankrupt. He did extremely well. He brought it back. He was successful. Uh, he's a successful man. He's a man. He deserves a chance. If he wants to run for president, and he's got the bajangas and the uh, experience and the uh, wherewithal to... Uh, do the job, which I think he does, then he deserves to be exactly where he is. You know, someone had said to me the other day that uh, I was talking to them about this this particular issue. Got a phone call? Not. Got a phone call? Okay. Well, well, we'll take a phone. Let me. Okay, we'll take a phone and we'll do it. You mind if take a call right now? Sure. Okay, good. Call me on the air. Your question or comment, please. Uh, Mr. Broussard, your guest there seems very like a very nice, intelligent, articulate man up until the point that he said that uh, he would vote for Herman Cain. In 1964, when I was in fourth grade, I read the newspaper accounts of China having a nuclear weapon. Herman Cain did not know that in an interview the other day. He is not qualified to be dog catcher, let alone president. I wish the Republicans would run somebody else. Okay. But... Uh, uh, Herman Cain is a total joke, and so are most of the Republican candidates, with the exception of maybe the guy, uh, Gary Johnson, who was governor, I believe, of Arizona. Right, But right. Uh, the rest of them, uh, uh, even some of the stuff Ron Paul says, i got to agree with, but then other things I just look at him and just say he's nuts. But uh, And I don't understand why you yourself, as a black man, would be supporting the Republican Party. The Republican Party has never done anything for any anything positive uh, in recent memory anyway for the uh, uh, you know with the exception of Lincoln freedom the slaves right, back in right. the 1860s has never done anything positive at all for a man of color okay and, sure, yeah. uh, so I mean I, I'm sitting here listening to both you guys are seemingly intelligent and I, I just can't believe my ears Lincoln. but I'll let you uh, okay uh, this well, thank. Well, it, well con continue, continue looking at the show, and, and you're right. We're having a discussion, and in all due respect, it, it's various opinion. That's what it's all about. That's what America is all about. You have an opinion, and and a lot of times I would say to the callers, we a lot of times uh, we're having a discussion. I'm the, I'm the facilitator here, and the moderator aspect of it, and uh, uh, we're trying to we're talking to the issue of race, and uh, we're saying that hey, this is where we are today. And was, a lot of people are talking along that same line. Who was the first president or the first man who initiated civil rights reform in, Ar in uh, Little Rock, Arkansas, and uh, began it in 1956-57? I remember it very well. I was living in Knoxville, Tennessee at the time. Who was that? He was a Republican. What was his name? Dwight David Eisenhower. So the answer is yes, we did. Well, you know, but but he brought up some good points, you know, from he the did. standpoint of saying, uh, and that's why we brought we opened it up from the standpoint that uh, the people tend to refer <clears throat> to the Republican Party as Lincoln Republicans, but that's a historical fact. But 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 when you start thinking about current day, they tend not to want to exp to be more pro quote pro that area like during this particular time. You know what I'm saying? Identifying with African Americans and 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 other minorities. You know what I'm saying? I hear what you're saying. They, they don't see they don't see the the blacks uh, are minorities in the party from a proactive kind of a situation. Well, Alan Alley has, I think, three or four Latinos. That's the chair of the uh, chair of the Republican Party. Chair of the, the Republican ORP. Okay. 
has three or four Latinos on his board. Mm. He did reach out. I wrote both uh, Bob Tiernan and Alan uh, a letter and email, sent him an email. Please include. Are they African Americans on the board? I don't think so. Okay. But he did reach out to the Latinos, to the minorities, and they are on the board. So it's only just the, just the Latinos? Yes. But no, but no blacks? Uh, not to my knowledge. No Asians? Uh, I'm not sure. Okay. These, not these sure. are Americans. But the idea is to show some sense of diversity, right? That's right. Okay. Yeah. And then outreaching, because that's been another issue with reference to the Republican Party, and that's as outreaching, if you will, to other minorities. Well, Alan Alley has done a better job than anybody else. Okay. Even from he a has. national perspective. He's what? Even from a national perspective. Yes. He's okay. he's a good man. Alan, uh, he's a good man. He's the chairman of the ORP. He has reached out to the minorities. Uh, I support him in that respect. Mm -hmm. And I'll continue to push him. Okay. <laughs> I, 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 I'd also remind the, the viewers for this particular show, check out the uh, the, the YouTube. Uh, we are on, we're on YouTube. And and in one of those pieces, we've got the Michael Zack. Remember Michael Zack? Michael Zack is somewhat of a historian, and he talks about the, the whole idea of, uh, of Lincoln during the Lincoln era and, and how Republicans related to uh, minorities and, and uh, how they are doing today. And you can, you, can, you can look at that show on YouTube. It's on YouTube. Again, that, uh, I, I mean, I'll have them put that on the screen throw it out on the screen and you can visit it and, and check it out. And I, I had donned a, a Buffalo Soldier uniform and, and I interviewed uh, uh, Michael Zack uh, for about an hour. And I think you, you'd find it very interesting. Okay, so, uh, okay, now we got Herman. And by the way, where, where is Herman now in regards to the polling? Herman is number two. He's uh, immediately behind Mitt Romney. Mitt Romney is 28 percentile. Herman Cain is 27. Uh, Mitt, uh, uh, Gingrich, Newt Gingrich is 23. Herman Cain lost one point last week. Newt Gingrich picked up five points. Okay, but well, he's third. So he's third, but I see. And the rest of the gang are sort of like in the in the single digit. Yeah. Okay, Perry is single district governor from Texas. Rick Rick Perry, yeah. And, and then, 28. Okay. He's doing very well. Stayed, uh, stayed about where he was at 28. No, no, no. Perry. Not Perry. You're talking about Romney. Is, is that, is Ro that Romney's 28. Rick Perry's 27. I'm sorry. Yes. Rick Perry's? No, you're talking about Kane is 27. Kane is 27. <laughs> okay. Rick Perry is about two or three or four or five or something like that. He's a single digit. Let's put it that yeah. way. Yeah, from Texas. Right. Yeah, he's from single digit. And then Michelle, uh, was it? Was she's at four, five. Four or five. And yeah. How about Ron Paul? Where is he? Paul's seven. Seven or eight or ten? Okay. okay, Ron Paul is. Okay, all yeah. right. Well, we've got an idea. These are single digit. He's a single These digit. These are single, single, single digit. Single digit aspect yeah. of it. So let's clarify. Mitt Romney, 28. Right. Herman Cain, 27. Right. Uh, Newt Gingrich, 23. Okay. okay. I'm sorry. Okay. Those, 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 <laughs> are top, those are the top three. Yeah. Well, let's talk about, uh, um, uh, uh, I'm thinking about, not, not Rick, but uh, who, who's, the, who's the leading guy? The who guy? Who's the lead person now? Uh Mitt Romney, Mitt Romney, 28, yeah. Well, let's talk about Mitt Romney. What, what do you think about him? Well, you think you think he might be he might be the the, the presidential the nominee? Nominee. Uh, I don't know. Why? It's too early. Right. Uh, I looked up when I was going to come on. I looked up uh, what was going on, and I said, "Well, what's going to happen in Iowa?" And Iowa, January. It's a caucus, and there's a lot of work to do, and I. I don't know if Mitt Romney is is the guy. I don't know if Herman Cain is the guy. What I do see is Newt Gingrich is moving up. But then they say, with going back to Romney, uh, yeah. some some suggest that the religion might be an issue there with the the Mormon situation. Do you think that's going to be an issue? They said the same thing about John Kennedy. Okay, yeah, he was a Catholic. Yes. He was a Catholic. I was 19 years old. And they said the papal army is waiting at the border if he is elected president. Mm -hmm. Well, this is nonsense. Forget about religion. You can go to church. This is the United States. There's no state religion. You go where to go. The man is running for president of the United States. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Leave, the, leave the race and religion out of it. Okay. Concentrate on pol politics issues. So well, then there's Newt. You know, he's got his, he's got his, uh, his closets. He <laughs> closet does. Goodies too. Yeah. I mean, 
So yeah. That's another issue. Okay. That's another issue. So everybody's He's, got issues. Everybody has baggage. Everybody, everybody has baggage. issues. Baggage. Stick, stick, uh, uh, stick with politics. Uh, forget about race and religion. Uh, do a good job. Run the best. Run the best race you can, and the best man will win. The American people rarely ever make a mistake. Mm-hmm. Rarely. Hmm. I think they made a mistake last time, but we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, when one's running for office, you would think that uh, what what if they had a if one applied to run for office, that in this form that there was a certain amount of vetting that they had to also identify themselves with. You think that would work? Uh, I don't. And it's unconstitutional. What do you mean it's unconstitutional? The Constitution says that anybody who wants to run for president can announce and run for president of the United States. There's no form. Because of what, what background? If they're make felony, any difference. If they committed a felony, if they murdered someone, or if or he's actually, out of jail, actually raped someone, or no, you mean, you mean anybody? No. Could, you mean, wait a minute now on that level. I mean, think about it now. It's, that's serious. With all of us, because it's not, it's, it doesn't help the situation not at all. You know, because you got a you got a ten percent element that's, that was that will use anything or say anything. Correct. When a person come up, and you know wh- why? So why allow that person to get to that particular point? If a person has raped someone, I mean, if someone has raped someone, and, and then they sign down there, I, I did, and they say, did you rape anybody, or, or did you do this, or did you, did do, you that? do that? And you said no, 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 and then all of a sudden, after you, after he turned in the form, and they found that that's to be a, a case, then that should be enough inf- info to actually throw you out. Fair. Yeah. Leave it up to Congress. Congress. But Leave it up people. to Congress in the form. No, what if they about, want to institute that, fine. If not, I'm I'm going to stick with what we got. Because a rapist is not going to say I'm going to run for president of the United States. He'd be laughed out of the. He'd be no, but now, out. but now you just made the point about the fact that anybody can run. Anybody can regardless run. Regardless of what your background is. Thirty-five years old, native-born citizen of the United States. Without, regardless of what your background is. Uh, yeah. The Constitution says what it says. <laughs> okay. That's what it says. Hmm. Because you know, we just here within within the state of Oregon, you know, we we're going through an election right now on um, the former, former Congressman David Wu. Correct. Okay? And 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 it was shown that uh, he had, he had, that there was this history, if you will, this this dark history about the the whole idea of, 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 of sexual harassment of some sort, right? Remember that? I don't recall that. Yeah, yeah. I do recall the tiger suit. I do recall uh, mental issues, and I do recall that his staff left him, and the media did not report it. Hmm, hmm. But my point is that I, I guess I, maybe maybe I maybe I maybe I'm wrong or whatever. But the bottom line is that it looked like to me there should be some way uh, to put together some sort of a form that that I identify these various areas. And if you say yes, 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 or no, 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 you got me. And then all of a sudden it's found out to be the fact. Then that should be enough to, to throw you out the deal, fair? And you sign down at the bottom line, notarize it. If the Congress of the United States and the president signs the bill, I will support the bill. Okay, but now it still is a government of the people, by the people, and for the for people. For the people. Not Congress, not the U.S. president, it's the people, right? Yeah. So I'm concerned about it. My, I guess the only thing I'm talking about is that when, when, they, when, when they were out playing politics and whatever, I mean, you're talking to the masses. Uh, Politios are very sharp. You know, they got money and they got staff. I mean, in all due respect, they, they don't have teleprompters. Fortunate for us, they don't have teleprompters right now, right? Okay. Everybody has to just talk straight up. Got me? Okay. Yeah, I think if they had their, if they, if they really had their say in the matter, they would all have teleprompters. This is the only time we have the opportunity to see them for what they are in the raw. Okay. <laughs> right? <laughs> is that fair? Is that a fair deal? Okay. That's a fair deal. Okay. Well, look, we, we spent quite a bit of time on this piece. It looks, it looks like looking pretty good. We had one caller, and hopefully the caller will continue, maybe give us another call. But we're going to open up the line in the next half hour. And uh, if you want to call us while we're talking, that's fine. Uh, whatever your feedback and feel that you feel about this piece. Now, we're going to also talk about the uh, the whole idea of Occupy Oregon, Occupy Wall Street and whatever. So if you want to call us in, you can give us a call, too. We're going to take a short break, and we'll be right back. You are watching Oregon Voters Digest. This program can be seen again on these channels on these dates and times. Tell a friend.
Oh. Welcome back again to this segment of the Oregon Voters Digest. I'm Bruce Broussard, your host. I guess you, if you were with us on the first half hour, we, we were talking about uh, the presidential election, uh, i.e. The, uh, the various entities that are, that, are, that are vying, if you will, to be the candidate from the Republican Party and, and just talking. And I might add, too, for those of you who are looking at the show, you know, it, it's about opinions. We should respect opinions. I mean, you know, have this, these discussions, just like just like we're having. I'm having a discussion with Tom. Both Tom and I, are, uh, we're, we're all creatures of our exposure. That's what we're all about. And then unless we have facts put up in the front of us, we, we deviate one way, and sometimes we don't even go along with the facts. But, but let's, let's respect one's opinion. I mean, that's what this, that's what this country is all about, you know, and, and I feel very comfortable with that. And, and that's one of the things we do in Oregon Voters Digest, and we want you to get excited about it and have those discussions. I think it's good for us, especially now. We want to make sure that whoever happens to be president of the United States coming, uh, coming up this time around, we want to make sure we have a very positive person, uh, one that understands what diversity is all about, one, one that understands there's family, there's, there's fairness, freedom of speech, we got a constitution we're dealing with. So so it's very important that you get engaged. Get engaged and make sure you vote. Make sure you vote. It's so it's so easy to sit down and talk after the fact, but vote. Get involved. You can vote. You got that one vote and that's very important. You do that process. Okay, with that, Tom has been our, our guest to date and we spent quite a bit of time talking about the, the candidates uh, vying, if you will, for their for the Republican person, if you will, uh, for presidency. So now what we're going to do, we're going to come back, back down to, to Oregon and spend a little time here locally. He, he's brought he's brought some some points that were were made by uh, Alan Alley, who happens to be the Republican chair, right? State ORP, Republican chair, State chair. Uh, of Oregon. Yeah. And uh, he sent out an email uh, not too long ago, and, and Tom brought it with him. And uh, I thought maybe we, some very interesting things there. So he's going to throw some points out there. Go on, Tom. Go it on. shows the wisdom of our our. Of Alan Ellie, who's okay. the chairman, and he's he, a chairman. He's a chairman, yeah. And uh, he's he, Alan's fed up. Hmm. And he sent me this, and I just said, "Wow, he hit the nail on the now, head." Now, Alan, by the way, ran for governor. He ran for governor. You know, yeah, it was, it was beat out in the primary uh, by uh, Chris Dudley. Chris Dudley. Chris Dudley. Remember, he was he fired against uh, yeah. our present governor, Kitz Hopper, and, and he lost. He right. lost that race. Yeah. He was a former trailblazer, by the way. Right. A uh, ball player. Okay. So Alan Alley now is is, is chair the new the new chair of the, the state board. of the okay. ORP. Okay. Now he sent this out, and, and there was some very going on. Throw, throw them out. Throw out. Said I'm fed up with the American can-do spirit is being replaced by what can you do for me, crony capitalism. But that's all of us, though. <laughs> I'm fed up that as the rest of the world sprints ahead of our educational system. Our children will be relegated to the intellectual bunch. I'm, this is a good one. I like this. I'm fed up with bureaucrats who play venture capitalists when they know nothing about ventures or capitalism. Now, right. this is from a guy who started a business in his garage, and it's Pixar. I think Pixar works or Pixar. Hopefully, he's going to have solutions to that, that those points that he made. He will. I'm fed up with the focus on creating a sustainable environment for critters when our toxic business environment is poisoning our workers. Okay. I'm fed up with Occupy, hatred, intolerance, name calling, etc., and I'll bet you are too. The good news is that many of us are doing something about it. We are not victims, and we demand more from our politicians. Good point. We want change, but we were done with merely hoping for it. We have about 18 to 24 months to save the United States. Okay. So now, that's right. now he's chair of the Republican Party. Yeah. Now, he, he criti he, he's critical of those points, but now wh what is he going to do about it? Has, has he said anything about solutions? I mean, you know, he's criticized, but what is he going to do? Let's, let's take that first one. Let's, say, let's go back to that first let me, one. Let me read you what his, some of his answers are. To do, that, to, uh, to do this, we need people who are not steeped in political dogma, are beholden to special interest. Very important point. We need people who have been responsible for employees, answered to shareholders, and delighted customers. Okay. Imagine a government that delighted citizens. I'm fed up with politics, but my aspiration is that the Oregon Republican Party, the party of Mark Hatfield, who worked across the aisle very well mm -hmm. and is highly respected by both Republicans and Democrats will make Oregonians once proud of Oregon politics. Where's Vicar T in that piece? 
Vicatia. Yeah, I am the party of Mark Hatfield and Vicatia. Okay, okay. We are making progress. Our candidates have real ideas and the experience to back them. And Rob Cornelis. Hmm. Very running good. Running for Congress, running for yeah. Congress. Running for C D one. Right now. Right now. And that's the that's the support for the party. Has support from the party. Uh We'll do everything we can. Uh, I can't wait until he and Bonamici go head to head on some some debate or something. Okay. I'm, I'm really looking forward to that. Uh, as a nation and a state, we can no longer afford to bottle up that as an aspiration. It's our lifeblood. We can no longer afford to deny that the most basic human aspiration to prosper and provide a better future for your family. Hmm. Okay, so these are some of his points. Some of his points. These are some of his points. Now, he did I a very good job with this. Okay, but, but he basically is saying he talks about his frustration. I guess the next letter I'd like to see is something that talks to a solution, responding to how he's going to fix it up. Support Republican candidates. That's what he's saying? That's what he's saying, really. Is he going to run for governor? Uh, I don't know. Oh, I don't yeah. know. So we need leadership, right? We need leadership. That's what he said. That's what he said. So is he going to step up to the plate? Uh, he stepped up to the plate twice. 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 Okay. So so he's now he's creating he's he's the he's the deal maker now, so to speak. Oh, uh, I don't know that. You don't think about that? I don't know that. Let me ask you another question <laughs> that people are constantly talking about and referring to the Republican Party, and that is the Tea Party. Yeah. Is is that a proponent of the of the Republican Party, the Tea Party? No. Uh, what I is, went to the so tea, what, what is the Tea Party to you? What, 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 how, do, how would you define the Tea Party? Tea Party is uh, people who are fed up with existing politics in the United States. They, uh, I went to a a convention of the Tea Party a little over a year ago, and there were 300 people there, and everyone of the people who was a delegate or I knew at Clackamas County Republicans was there. What oh, was a mix in that, in that crowd? It was a mix. There are a few Democrats. Okay. Most are Republicans. The preponderance, I believe, is middle, is, uh, let's call them unaffiliated. They're just sick of politics. They're sick of, the, they're sick of D.C. They're sick of people, politicians spending money we don't have. They're sick of driving the country in the ground. And how, how do you relate the, the, the whole issue with uh, uh, Occupy, Occupy Oregon, or Occupy Portland? Does that, is that any, any, any similar, similarities? And well, what's, I compared, what's, the de what's the definition of that group, you think, I, from your perspective? You from know, my perspective? Yeah, from your perspective. What, what does Oregon, Oregon what, what does that Occupy Portland, what does that do for you? doesn't do anything. Okay. Uh, they have no compelling message. They have no agenda, no leadership, and no focus. They are about a year and a year or a year and a half behind the Tea Party, who are uh, who has a compelling message, an agenda, commitment, experience, leadership, and focused on federal government and spending issues. If the Occupy people get themselves together in a year or a year and a half and get organized and get leaders and a compelling message, they will find out that they are, they are angry at the same people. They're angry like we talked before, I told you. That. They were angry at the same people. Different face, different name, same guy. One people, the Tea Party people are angry at government. The Occupy people are mad at Wall Street. If they get together and compare notes they will find that government and corporations are hand in glove. If they get together and get themselves organized and torpedo the people they should torpedo, politics will change in the United States from the grassroots level, hmm. from your and I, our level. If they do that, politics will change. If they don't do that, it will be just exactly like, like Alan Alley said. They're, they're, people can't agree. They're so divisive right and left that they can't agree on anything. Okay. And we're almost paralyzed. Okay, I tell you what, look like we've got a caller. Maybe we want to get in this discussion. Call me on the air. Your question or comment, please. Brother Bruce. Yes, how you doing? Your favorite uh, Lincoln Democrat. Yes, sir. Uh, and I was listening to the discussion 
talking about the Tea Party. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Taxed enough already. And the Occupy Portland group. Yes. And uh, what do you think? Well, I think the Occupy group, they're serving a good purpose okay. in trying to point out, I think, that the banks have all got bailed out, but us taxpayers, who the banks were supposed to take care of, who the banks were supposed to take care of, they took their federal bailout money and uh, ran with it mm -hmm. and got their bonuses and... Uh, I, I'm thinking about starting a new tea party. Okay. And instead of taxed enough already, mine is going to be take everybody along. I got you. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> okay. And Bruce, I got to tell you, your last show that you did for Veterans Day yes, was sir. awesome. Well, thank you, sir. And uh, I really appreciated it, uh, along with a number of other people. Well, thank you very much, sir, and God bless you. He, he makes a he makes the point there. He gets makes a good point. Bailed out for uh, banks, insurance companies, AIG, big corporations, General Motors, but no bailed out for taxpayers. Uh, like I said, same same guy, different name, different face, same guy. Get together, force government to change, and I think it will change. If, Herman, if either one of the three, Herman Cain, Mitt Romney, or Newt Gingrich get in, I think they will, they will change immediately. My, my dream ticket is one of those three and Rudolph Giuliani as a vice presidential campaign to carry New York. If that happens, we'll, we'll win the White House. Well, it's going to be quite a debate. You know, you still got President Obama. I mean, I realize there's a focus on the Republican Party right yeah. now, and, and whoever comes out of that deal is the one that... It's not going to be an easy run, if you will, just for whoever's running against it. That's right. That's yeah, right. Because you know, you're right. fair. Fair. Okay. Because then, then the issues. Then we really just start discussing the issues. Yeah. I think anybody running for office today was going to have a tough time situation. I mean, we were we were in a state of flux, big time. Yeah. Uh, before all this stuff happened. Okay. We still are. Yes, very much so, and um, so. Uh, I, I like the caller just uh, what he just got through saying in regards to he's getting ready to put his own tea party together. In fact, I, 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 I've had my tea party for a minute. It's called the Lincoln Tea Party. Okay. So I can remind the Republican parties about all of the things that were happening uh, back in the 1863s up in, the, in that kind of, in all due respect to reference to the freedom of the slave, the participation, if you will, of, uh, of African Americans during that particular time. Mm -hmm. And I think had Lincoln lived, had Lincoln lived, we wouldn't be sitting up here today talking about the whole issue of race. Yep. I mean, you know, and uh, the whole issue of reparation and things of that nature. And I'm, I'm still thinking about uh, some of the things that were made during that particular time because it was stated, remember that? It was stated during that time that uh, if you fought in that war, in that civil war, uh, uh, you'd get the 40 acres and a mule. Remember that? Yep. Everybody was supposed to have gotten that, but for some strange reason, we forgot that. So anyway, I'm, I'm throwing that out. Okay. Can I mention something? Talk to me. Reparations. Talk to me about reparations for the for uh, Afro Afri African Americans. Well, I tell you How what. How do you feel? I tell you what. Uh, the reparations for African Americans. Let's go back in history. Go back in time. As far as I'm concerned, uh, uh, the the folks are over 300,000, if you will, uh, African Americans and uh, fought in the uh, fought in the Civil War. Civil War. Fought in the Civil War. And uh, during that particular time, it was stated by general or whatever, but, but the fact of the matter is that it was recorded that a person would be getting 40 acres of mule. That was for everybody, not just blacks, but whites. Yeah. Anybody that fought in the war got 40 acres of mule. 40 acres of mule. Okay. And that, that's signed big time. And uh, those people are listed. I mean, because I know just like you and I, uh, we, we, we had service numbers, right? We had service numbers, right? You bet. Okay, so we know who these people are, yeah. right? So as far as I'm concerned, rightfully so, they should be getting that reparation. Fair, fair, or at least their, at least their folks or whatever, their, their whatever offspring, whatever. But, the, but that's make an effort. Make an effort. Do something. Right, 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 right. Well, that, do that's, something. That's why I've got the Lincoln Tea Party. I'm the Lincoln Tea Party. Wally, Wally, Wally's got his his Tea Party. I got my Tea Party too. Okay. And you got a Tea Party too, right? No, I'm a Republican. Oh, you got a Republican Tea Party? Uh, no. You just uh, got. You just there, got. A, there's one. There's a. Republican Party, Tom is a member of the Republican Party. I'm not a member of the Tea Party. I respect them. I support them. 
but I want to get people elected. Our job in Clackamas County Republicans is to elect but you don't Republican say no, you candidates. Don't, you don't say no to uh, Lincoln I, Republican votes, do you? I do not. Okay, all right. I just want to know. I do not. <laughs> Lincoln Tea Party, right? Whatever. We're, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> okay, hey, give us a call. You, you've got the number here on the screen. Uh, we're talking about uh, anything you want to talk about. Uh, you know, like I said, uh, let's talk about uh, uh, the debates. Yeah, we get we having national debates. If you're not watching TV, folks, it's a it's something. I mean, you need to you need to tune in on some of those debates. They're going to be crying for quite some time, and it's a heck of an opportunity to get a good feel about the kinds of people who want to represent this country, who wants to represent you, and you need to know what that's all about. Because trust me, after they get through going through these open debates. You're going to see them in the front of a teleprompter. That means that, guess what? They're going to have staff. They're going to put those speeches together, and they're just going to read them off. And, you know, they can't read them off at this point in time. That's right. They've got to basically be who they are. And we need to know what's going on with these folks, how they're going to react. I mean, I'm still reminded about uh, about Governor Perry when they asked him a question. He said, boy, he was really just on and on and on. He had a couple of things down about the, the three the three uh, agencies he was going to cancel out. And all of a sudden, he forgot got, one. Got one, got, got two, two and, and then, get three. And he, uh, oh, he stopped right there in what he was saying. And then he, he was just he was just totally embarrassed. That's but, okay. You know, but, he, but it's okay. But in certain degrees, you know, you ask yourself the question, well, what about that teleprompter? Yeah. <laughs> okay. There are no debates anymore. It's all choreographed. Well, I, I, no, no, not now. The debates are not, they're not choreographed. It's all open. They're not. They're all open. They are open. They're all open. Right? We'll see. Huh? We'll see. Just like we're talking. It's all open. I mean, you, got, you got a teleprompter up there? <laughs> nope. We'll see. Okay. We'll see. So anyway, but, but like I said, tune into those some of those debates. It's really good. It's really great. Uh, on the other side of the coin, you know, President Obama, he's out there every day. I mean, he's you see him every day, and they're constantly attacking him. On, I mean, he's got about the business of running this country right now. And then when he gets down to the point where they're actually running one to the other, it's going to be a very interesting deal. So anyway, let's talk a little bit more about the uh, the whole about uh, about Occupy Portland. Did you see any of the any of the newscasts? About I did. When I left today, as a matter of fact, in the booth, I saw what they were doing. The police were down there, and they were they were going to get them X amount of time, and they were just going to move them out. Did you go down there at all? I did not. You did not go down there. I did not. Okay. No. Okay. Some no. some some folks have said that you know when <clears throat> they they went down there and this that and the other and and, and my my feeling too is basically is that uh, when they first started this whole piece, I think they could have been a little bit more organized. Right. Are you fair? I think. I think. I <laughs> yeah. think maybe they what they should have done. Maybe, and this is just my opinion. Okay. Yeah. I, I'm not calling the shots. I'm not the mayor. I'm just a taxpayer. <laughs> okay. But okay. the bottom line is that I, I think if, if they were, if the mayor, if Sam, had, Sam Mayor, mayor Adam had given them the okay, okay, fine. Maybe the, if this is the area they wanted to deal with that piece. They should have fenced in that area that they're trying to fence now. They should have fenced it in now. They should have fenced it in then, and then basically issued them, issued them tags. Mm -hmm. issued them tags, and they would have to check in and out in that situation. Got me? That way they were able to control who was inside of that fenced-in area. Fair? You no. got me? No. You don't understand that? You don't no. like that? You like no. it to open, right? Yeah. So, but see, but, but the problem now is that all the folks from Burnside, the transit's on the other side of Burnside, that's the problem. You had all kinds of drugs, you had needles all on the grounds, and the whole kinds of things in there now. Well, I think Adam, uh, Sam Adams did a, a a fairly good job but when it comes to letting people speak their peace and protest and hold up cardboard signs I'm a fan of cardboard signs. that's fine all I'm just saying doing that do uh, it. but I'm just saying but those folks let give them the opportunity to do that I am saying that by basically keeping it all open you had all kinds of folks that came up in there that's okay not necessarily that's about true. the banking situation or whatever we have we have it's the First Amendment freedom of speech it's it's been stretched let it stretch imagine how much stress this is made on on, on the total society well I don't know about total society but it's it's uh, put a little stress on the uh, Portland Police Department and on Portland politicians but they ran for the job they got elected for the job they they are doing the job they, they're not doing too bad but you know, it's like, like one of the callers were talking about the, about the banks and this, that, and the other. You know, uh, I think Wally was talking about that piece. That was a focus. That was the high point. And then as time went as time went on, and then like to date, a lot of folks who were for for them are against them. Okay. You understand where I'm coming yeah. from? Yeah. Because when all of a sudden you start talking about you know what, gee whiz, they've got all kinds of things in that area, like like drug needles and people overdosing and things of that nature. Yeah. I mean, those weren't the people that were talking about protesting. Well, then send the police in and arrest the drug dealers. 
oh, the drug dealers. Oh, come on. I mean, uh, huh? Send them in, arrest the drug dealers, arrest the people who are doing that. But what if they had already had a fenced in area they were able to control that, that same situation? Don't you think it would have been a better deal? I'm not comfortable with that. You're not comfortable with no, that? No. Okay. Well, that's fair. Hey, by the way, you got to call. Anybody want to call? Give us a call. Uh, I realize this may be a touchy subject, but we got to discuss it. I mean, that's that's what this is all about. Tom is here. He's a guest, and he's got his opinion, and and I've got opinions, and we all have opinions. I think that's what this is. That's what this democracy is all about, right, Tom? It is. Okay, fine. That's it is. Anything else we might want to bring up online? What, what, what are we thinking about? What about your candidates that were running for office in there? Uh, Rob Cornelis, I know him. Okay. Uh, he's a very good man. He's another guy that started a business from nothing. And uh, sports, in the sports field, uh, he does a very good job. I've seen him uh, extemporaneously uh, at the tax lunch. I've seen him speak. I've, I've watched him. Uh, he can do the job. He is a good man. He's qualified. He's got good support. And I look forward to voting for him. What's your if I could vote for him, what, I'm not in CD. What's monitor, your expectation sorry. of him? Is there anything specific? I mean, uh, anything like, like like focusing on education? How does he feel about the education situation for this state? I don't know. You don't know. I don't. Yeah, know. But so why are you supporting him? I support him number one because he's Republican. Uh, number two, I support him because he's I know him. Per, I know him personally, not well, but I do know him, and uh, I trust him. And uh, I asked him one time, I said, Rob, why, why didn't you say something when you, heard, when you heard about David Wu during the general election? I said, why didn't you speak up? Why didn't you say something? And he says, well, you know, we only, that was a rumor, Tom. And I, I, we decided to leave it alone because it was a rumor. We didn't, we had no hard basic facts. We had no confirmation so we left it okay. alone let's hold your point there we got a call guy got good character got guy good has character. excellent character but, but start thinking about something specific i want to know a little bit more okay all right <laughs> call me on the air your question or comment please yes uh, thanks i would like to see discussed at the national level including in the presidential debates okay the need to bring back the glass steagall law the glass what glass steagall Glass-Steagall. okay you know what that is no tell us about it that was enacted during the Great Depression to separate investment banks from commercial banks. Right. Okay. Right. So that the uh, the bankers couldn't gamble with our money. Right. Okay. That's kind of like the source of the whole crisis, which is going on in the last few years. Okay, yeah. sir. Yeah. Would Would the Republicans be in, Would Would your guests be in favor of bringing back? There that we go. Law? Stay on the line. Let's ask him that question. Would you be in favor of that? One hundred percent. You get that caller. Yeah, that's great. I'm I'm really glad to hear that. All yeah. right, then. Sounds good. Here we go. The Republicans 100%. are agreeing with a Democrat. Well, I don't care who he is. I agree with the glass to bring him back the glass steagall. That's a good deal. Good deal. Thank you very much, caller. Okay. Okay, that's a good deal. Okay, spend a little bit more time about the glass eagle for the for the viewing audience. Well, I don't know it well, but that there used to be uh, the glass steagall separated investment bankers from retail bankers. Okay. Uh, they they got rid of it and therefore the Bank of America and other big They're banks can also. combine and, the two and, and use the reserves of the retail banking industry for investment purposes. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, I get that. All right, all right, caller. Any any other calls? Give us a call. We got about another oh, five minutes or so. About another five minutes. And uh, my, my guest is Tom Devaney, and he was former chair of the Clackamas County Republicans. And we've been talking about um, his his stay as a his stint as a as as a chair uh, during that particular time. And and we've talked about a number of things. We've been talking about the debates that are going on now among the um, among re Republicans. You have former chair. He's a former chair. He's, I think he's going to run again, don't I think? He's going to, he's going to run no, again. No, I don't. He's being very active right now. <laughs> okay. we got about two more minutes here now. Let's uh, talk amendments. Real quick, like. But amendments to the two Constitution minutes. that I that I support. Which, which is it? Balanced budget. Balanced budget. Item veto. Item veto. Expanded referendum call. Okay. Uh, tax limits. Okay. Term limits. Term limits. Oh, term limits. Term That's limits. A good one. So what do you mean by that? Term limits. Uh, I, I would support a, uh, an amendment for Congress three terms. That would be six years. That would be six years. Six years. Okay. And what about two Senate? terms Senate? Okay, that would be twelve years. That'd be twelve years. Okay. All right. So that, that, that's a, that's a pretty good deal. Yeah. And what will that do, real quick, like? What, what do you? Why are you? Why are you supporting that amendment? It would bring new people. It would keep fresh new ideas 
constantly coming into the system. People talk about this, the value of seniority, you know what I mean? The difference between the, the two. The value of seniority. Uh, <laughs> the value of seniority, seniority uh, I, I don't know, I guess it's all right. Yeah. I, I, uh, but they get in there and they get entrenched and we get um, airports in the middle of nowhere and uh, cronyism. Uh, I want term limits. I support term limits. Okay, good. All right. No, wait, what's the other? You got another point there? We got, a, we got any more? Congress shall make no law that applies to the citizens of the United States that does not apply equally to the senators and or representatives. And Congress shall make no law that applies to, to the senators and or re representatives does not, that does not apply equally to the citizens of the United States. Okay, that's a good point. This has been floating around for quite a while. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'll leave this with you. Well, Tom, this has really been a pleasure uh, chatting with you. And, and again, as I say to the folks who are out there viewing, you know, Tom has his opinion and you can have opinions. Uh, I'm, I'm a facilitator trying to get him to, to come up with his opinion. <laughs> And, I, and, uh, and so naturally, I try to throw a few in. Every so often, you might get an opinion of mine, because uh, I know Tom has, my, my, my guest always has some other things to think about. But anyway, do have those discussions and do look at those debates. And please don't forget, start telling the folks, be prepared to vote. Be prepared to vote. Oh. Okay, that's a very important piece. And as usual, thanks again, Tom, for being my with pleasure. us. pleasure. Appreciate it very much. My pleasure. And as usual, as George, as George Page would always say, backward to you, what you believe in. Have a good day. Have a good evening. Take care. God bless. Happy birthday, Marine. Thank you very much, sir.